World Wrestling Entertainment is back, ladies and gentlemen. It certainly feels good to be a wrestling fan again, you know, with everything going on in WWE now and this, like, resurgence that they've been having. You know, they claim that they're in this new era now, which is being known as the Paul Levesque era. And, you know, with that, you know, gone are the days of all these dumb storylines and cringe dialogue that Vince McMahon would make all the superstars say during his reign as the chairman of the board and the owner of the company and that sort of thing. All of that is gone and in its place is what I would consider to be like a genuine masterpiece of entertainment. Just the way everything's going on, you know, everything feels smoother and that sort of thing. So that's why today in this video I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on the new era of WWE and everything that I think is great about it. So because there's so much to talk about, let's just get right into the video. You know, one thing I do like about this is the fact that you can tell that there are differences in this company. It's like night and day, because like Vince McMahon, the way he ran the company, you know, it was like basically childish or things to sort of entertain him rather than entertain the masses of fans that they've had all these years. And I think that was just the wrong way to go about it. Now, granted, there have been some incredible things that have happened in WWE history over the years and that sort of thing under the Vince McMahon regime. But it feels like there's a lot more that's about to come up out of this new regime that's currently in charge with Triple H running creative and all that kind of stuff um, and TKO running everything. It seems like there's a lot to look forward to with the way that they're running things nowadays. So these are kind of five things that I've noticed at least about this current era that I think make this really fantastic to watch and this really incredible product that WWE used to be and is now kind of getting back to. So one big difference that I noticed about this new era of WWE is that all the storylines seem to make sense. You know, you have all the stuff with the bloodline, uh, the Judgment Day stuff, Cody beating Roman Reigns, all these incredible storylines that are happening all at one time and they all seem to flow really well and make a lot of sense at least within the context of the specific story that they're trying to tell and I do like that a lot of the stories sometimes interweave so for example um, just this past Monday night on Raw as of the time of this recording Rhea Ripley announced that she was injured and had to relinquish the World Heavyweight Championship and that was because of an attack from Liv Morgan and that all circles back to the fact that Rhea Ripley injured Liv Morgan about a year ago I think in the same sort of fashion by attacking her from behind and that kind of thing. Now Liv Morgan's injury I don't think it was real I just think they were maybe making it a storyline or something or maybe it was real I don't know but the fact that Rhea's is also real and resulted from an attack from Liv Morgan um, I think plays really well into the story and you see that with a lot of the storylines in WWE nowadays where the, it's this long term booking that's paid off over all these years or even just the last couple months of everything that's been going on so they kind of interconnect everything and especially with Rhea being injured now that affects the Judgment Day so like she's going to be gone for a while and she's kind of the leader of the group the one that keeps everybody in line so now it's, they're already planting the seeds for like dissension between Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Or you have the bloodline stuff where like with Roman being gone and having lost the Universal Championship, Solo Sokoa is now taking over the bloodline and like kicking Jimmy Uso out and bringing in new members like Tama Tongo. And that's all a result of Cody beating Roman for the championship. So you have like all these interconnected storylines in a similar fashion like what Marvel has done with their movies and that sort of thing you get the solo like spin-off movies and then you get these interconnected universe uh, movies with like the Avengers and that sort of thing and it all ties together well and WWE is doing a great job with that without having too much thrown at us at once I mean for a five hour product essentially with you know Raw and Smackdown combined every week uh, they managed to not cram too much into it where it feels like we're being overwhelmed with all this all these different storylines and that sort of thing and they've also managed to have it where we understand everything that is going on 
and it all makes sense and runs smoothly. It doesn't feel too convoluted or too crowded or anything like that. Now, I know what, some people complain there's not enough wrestling on each show because they focus more on like the storytelling and the backstage stuff and that kind of thing, but I think that works because essentially what you're watching is a TV show and you know, you're know you gonna get this dialogue and this exchange between these characters, but it feels real. You know, especially like you look at the Sami Zayn and Chad Gable stuff, like they formed a sort of friendship, like Chad wanted to train Sami on how to beat Gunter for the Intercontinental Championship. And then he ended up turning on him and you know, that all makes sense as well because that's how Chad now is, you know, he wanted to be the one to win the Intercontinental Championship and now Sami has it and he couldn't beat Sammy either, so he just finally snapped, you know. So all of that just makes sense, and that's all because of the way that they're producing their show nowadays, and the way that they're making everything feel so real with all the backstage interactions between the different superstars and that kind of stuff, and the in-ring work and everything, and even if there's a real injury in real life, they find a way to tie it into the show like look at CM Punk and Drew McIntyre you know Drew injured Punk in the Royal Rumble that wasn't supposed to happen but they made a story out of it they still managed to include CM Punk at WrestleMania to cost Drew the World Heavyweight Championship after he beat Seth Rollins and you know now Drew is just basically waiting for CM Punk to be able to fight again so he can face him in a match and get his revenge and that sort of thing so they tied that all in and they're tying in these real life situations with the actual storylines, and that makes it feel more real, in my opinion, which is something that WWE has really needed, this sort of realism, rather than just these wacky characters that don't really do much or are just there for comedy reasons. I mean, that still works, you know, you get, like, your R-Truth and that kind of stuff, but there's not too much of that to where it just feels like, what am I watching right now? This is a kid's show. Why am I watching this as an adult type of thing? You know, you don't get that, like oh, this feels like Spongebob, you know, which is what you used to get with WWE in the old regime. So now that's one of the major improvements I've noticed. So hopefully this is one thing that carries over for the next several, hopefully decades or whatever, and just they continue this level of consistency with all the storylines that, that they tell going forward. Another improvement the company's really been making a lot lately, even back a few years ago, like when Triple H sort of took over creative, we started to notice these types of things. And that's all the like hidden details um, throughout the show. So like for example, you'll see somebody, two superstars in the background or something that aren't normally talking, or that don't normally interact with each other. They're in the background just having a conversation. We don't actually hear their conversation, but you see them in the background of another shot where we're meant to pay attention to these two people talking to each other. And they'll have like Drew McIntyre talking to Paul Heyman in the background or something. And that's meant to play off later on. And it keeps your attention drawn to the screen at all times. Or another example, you know, back when Bray Wyatt first returned to the company, they started having all these QR codes popping up in random spots throughout the arena. Whether it was on a production item in the background or on the wall somewhere or literally a guy walking through the crowd holding a big sign that had a QR code on it. Uh, those kind of things are meant to, to keep us invested and keep us looking at the screen and focused on watching the entire three hours of Raw or the entire two hours of SmackDown or the entire pay-per-view or whatever because there might be more of that later on. And that's just incredible. That kind of goes back to the storylines as well where it's building this intrigue into the show you know that doesn't just have to do with the wrestling or they even sometimes hint at upcoming heel turns or something like i mentioned with chad gable and Sami Zayn. you know they kind of sowed the seeds there or the bloodline stuff like even with that you know this goes back to like when roman first told solo like he wants him to be next in line to be tribal chief he chose him like over jimmy and now that uh, roman is gone Solo is taking that to heart. Like, that was months ago that he mentioned that, maybe even a little over a year ago, probably, that Roman told Solo that, and now it's kind of coming to fruition. Or they're even giving hints to returning superstars, like when they started doing all these references to CM Punk coming back. Like, without actually saying anything, they just give these little hints or something. I think all of that is really well done as well, and that's akin to... Like I mentioned, a Marvel movie or whatever, or just movies in general, 
or they put Easter eggs in their movies, which are sometimes meant to reference um, the possible return of a character or the possible appearance of, the, of another character coming up in the future, or like some kind of future villain or whatever. Movies do that all the time, or they just put Easter eggs in it just for fun. But everything WWE has been doing with these sorts of things, like the QR codes and all that kind of stuff, always seems to lead somewhere. So it's not just random, and it keeps you guessing, like, why is Drew McIntyre talking to Paul Heyman? Or why is this person talking to this person, etc.? It's all these extra things going on around the main stuff that we're supposed to be focusing on, and I think that makes it a whole lot more fun to watch. Another huge difference that they've made to their product is just the production itself. Like, we're getting all these new camera angles and that sort of thing to really liven everything up. They're sort of doing away with the, like, graphics and AI stuff that we keep seeing with, like, the, you know, things popping up on the screen or whatever that you can't actually see in the arena. But they're doing these more focused cameras and that kind of thing or getting right up on the superstars or going further back, kind of like, you know, in the NFL with, like, football games and stuff. They have your cameras, like, kind of further back sometimes so you can see everything going on. Other times they focus on, like, one player for a brief moment and that sort of thing. And that's what WWE's kind of moving into the sort of more sports-like product especially, you know, being associated with UFC and that sort of thing because they're now under the uh, TKO banner and TKO owns UFC and WWE. So maybe they're trying to make themselves more sports-like for that reason. But it definitely makes it more watchable, I think, and it's ma it makes it feel more real, like as if there's just people there with cameras rather than it being a TV show. You know, I, I, I get that it is a TV show, but it's like it makes it feel more like a reality show kind of thing. And I think the best thing they're doing with their production right now is the way that they transition from one superstar to another. Like, a lot of the times, the last couple weeks or months or whatever, we've seen this new sort of thing where the cameraman will follow a superstar through, like, the whole backstage area. So we kind of get a whole look at the production area and all that kind of stuff and the hallways and everything throughout the arena as they're walk as the superstar is walking maybe back to their locker room or wherever they're going or if they're leaving the arena whatever the cameraman follows them and then once that superstar stops and talks to somebody else then it follows that person who's on their way to the ring for their next match and it's just this continuous like one shot take type of thing where they'll continue to follow them and it almost I mean it's very strange to see but in a good way I feel like because I'm not used to seeing it that way I do think it's it doesn't feel as like set up like hey these people are just standing off camera waiting for their cue to come in it's like no they're here already and we see that they're here because this person approaches them or whatever and I like that you get a look at like all the backstage stuff as this is happening because it shows you that yeah it is a tv show and we're meant to see all this stuff but it also makes it feel like this is a friendly environment like it's almost like we're getting a tour of their world their um, offices and that kind of stuff i mean i know it's in like an arena so it's still you kind of see that if you were a fan and you go to that arena for a football game or whatever but to see the way they have everything set up for their specific crew and that kind of stuff I think it's a lot of fun to really get to see all of that because you don't normally get to see what the backstage area or at least that part of the backstage area looks like in a wrestling company and it makes it feel like they're inviting us into their home which kind of almost makes it seem like they appreciate us like welcome you know this is how we do things here and this is you're going to get a look at that while also following this superstar and you know it all just feels so natural and everything else I just think it's incredible these advancements they're making in their production and the quality and everything else. I think one of the things I like the most about this new era is the way that they're improving the title. Not just the title designs or whatever, but also just being a champion at the same time. Like, they're making it feel really important. I know some people complain about, like, these longer title reigns and that kind of thing, especially Roman Reigns holding the championship for, like, three and a half years or whatever before losing it. But I kind of don't have a problem with that because I feel like it builds 
this importance around this championship. Like, if somebody is holding it for that long, it keeps us invested more because, or at least for me it does anyways, it keeps me invested more because I want to see somebody finally conquer that champion in, in a sense of, like, you know, with Roman and Cody Rhodes. Like, we wanted to see somebody finally topple Roman Reigns and someone finally take the title off Roman. So every time there's a match for that championship, you wonder, is this going to be the time it happens? Is this going to be the time it happens, etc.? And every time there's a close call or whatever, um, it keeps us really invested. And I kind of like those longer title reigns. And we, we're seeing that a lot more now. And I feel like that puts the championships on a higher level than they've ever been before. Even like the United States Championship and these mid-card titles feel like a prize worth fighting for, depending on who the person is that's fighting for it. For example, like I said, Chad Gable wanted to fight for the Intercontinental Championship, wanted to be the one to beat Gunter, because he's never held a singles championship, and at the time that was the only title he was able to fight for, because other people were fighting for the world titles and stuff. But that's a good first title for someone like Chad Gable to fight for. And depending who they put it on and how long the reign is, it feels like it's elevating these championships to make all of them feel just as important as the World Heavyweight Championship or the Universal Championship or whatever. Like, it doesn't feel like they just have these titles just to have extra titles for people to fight for because they want to have a champion hold the title for three years. Like, they all feel like these important championships at least in this new era. Like, every match at WrestleMania, I mean, not all of them were four titles, but all the ones that were for championships at WrestleMania 40 were some of the best matches on the card. And I think they do a really, they've done a really good job these last few months, especially even into the build for WrestleMania 40. They've done a really good job making every championship feel really important. And finally, I think the biggest improvement that they've made, honestly, is the match quality um, all of their matches feel important, or at the very least, even if they are just a random TV match, they at least give it enough time to where it feels like it means something, or that it is an important fight, at least for one of them. Whether it's just like they have one main event guy fighting someone else just as a, like a tune-up match or something, it at least adds to the story that that superstar is currently involved in, so like say Cody Rhodes was going to face like Grayson Waller or something, you know Cody's going to win, but that's kind of a warm-up for Cody, and maybe you can have the interferences from whoever's going to face him first, and that kind of thing, and they keep using these random matches to at least set up something else, or whether they're going to build a new rivalry out of this specific match, or turn somebody heel from it, or change a character completely just based off this loss or have like a losing streak for one of them or whatever it feels like every match is at least important in some way you know obviously like some aren't important as others and maybe some people don't really care about specific ones but they're still important in some way because it still ties into whatever story that they're trying to tell with each of these superstars and that's also another thing like every superstar has some kind of story that they're involved in even if it's a minor thing that's like going to go a couple weeks and then end they're still at least in a storyline they're not just out there being squashed every week for and not really doing anything so i feel like now every match has an importance every superstar has something going on at least so that it feels like this really lively world that's going on rather than just like Oh, here's a bunch of... We have a bunch of people on our roster, but some of them aren't doing anything. You know, they at least have people that they can use to be... Or to elevate another superstar or elevate another story that they're trying to tell. Also, the endings to the matches actually make sense, too. Like, even if there's a disqualification finish or a count-out or whatever, the ending at least makes sense. It's not just like, well, we booked ourselves into a pickle here because... We have these two big stars that not we don't want either one of them to lose. They make the endings to the matches still tie into the story and still make sense to one or the other of them. So, like, the person interfering is somebody's rival from that match or whatever. Or if that person gets disqualified, it's for a good reason, not just for the sake of, well, we couldn't decide on who to win and we just wanted this guy to beat this person up or whatever. 
it ties in it ties directly into what they're doing. Like for example, with Cody beating Roman like at WrestleMania forty, like yeah, there was all these shenanigans and outside interference and that kind of stuff, but it all fit with that story. Like every little thread in that story and all the interferences and everything else made sense from the story they've been telling for the last three and a half years. Like, pretty much all of Roman's rivals were, like, involved in that in some way, shape, or form. And Roman getting distracted by Seth being there and hitting him with the chair instead of Cody led to Cody winning, you know? So that was that made sense as an ending to the match. Roman was distracted. Or Drew being distracted by gloating and showing off his world championship to CM Punk ended up costing him in the long run because Damian Priest cashed in on him. So, you know, the endings all make sense to these sort of things. Or even if there is a double count out, it's used to build to another match between these two somewhere down the line. Or or it's just to show that these two superstars know each other so well that neither of them can lose or that kind of thing. So it all feels like it just makes sense and all the matches make sense. And they've improved the way that they tell the stories through the matches as well. So all in all, I think WWE is doing a tremendous job of like reinventing themselves, um, becoming a brand new company almost. It's like night and day compared to how it used to be. You know, there were like a whole decade almost of the people say was like the worst years in WWE history. Just the way that things were booked and produced and all that kind of stuff. So you can tell the obvious improvements with the company now that things have changed with management and all that kind of stuff. And who's running things now versus who was running it then. And it definitely feels like a more watchable product. But let me know what you guys think of this new era of WWE down in the comments section. What's your favorite thing that's happening currently? Your favorite storyline or whatever? Or what are you looking forward to the most? in the future that you think might be coming up as well. Uh, let me know all that down in the comment section. Also be sure to like this video and subscribe for more and check out all the other wrestling content I've got on this channel as well. Uh, thank you for watching the video everyone and I'll see you in the next one.